Hey guys, this is Lucas, and I just wanted to show you a couple of the basics of editing a website. Um, on the district website or your school site, if you're still using that, or have rights to do edits there. So a couple of things that you need to know about the Sharp School site. Um, to be able to edit any page, you first have to log in. So I'm actually going to come up here and uh, log into the site. All right, get myself logged in. Typically, uh, usernames are first name underscore last name. Okay, once I've typed my password in, uh, I'll click log in. Now, keep this in mind that to be able to edit a site, all of our school sites and our district sites are completely separate web pages. So, just because you have an account to edit on one page does not mean that you're going to have um, the ability to edit any of the pages in the system. Um, they're all completely separate, so you may have to have an account set up for you if you need edit rights to a particular page. For example, if you're one of our um, instructional coaches and you have edit rights to a particular page on your school site where you're based, but you don't have edit rights here, um, just contact me and I'll set you up an account so that you can do that. Okay, you'll notice when you're logged in, you have this little bar at the top called the, we call it the buddy bar, that's what they told us it was called in training, so that sticks. Um, this will only show up on pages that you have the uh, ability to edit. So don't worry about that you might you know, mess up in the entire site. That's not going to happen. Um, you can only edit pages you've been given rights to edit. So um, <clears throat> let me show you an example of what that might look like. So I'm going to go into departments here, instructional services, whoa, hold on, okay, and instructional technology. Okay, and this page definitely needs updating. So, <clears throat> let's say this is your page and you want to do some basic updates. Um, as you can see um, on the right hand side, these are pages that are associated with your page. So, um, any sub pages or links that you may have from your site. And then, of course, this is the main body of the page. So, if I want to edit this information in this space, I'm going to go up to Page Properties and I'm going to check out and Edit Page. And that's going to load the page in the edit view. All right, let me scroll down. Okay, and here you see all of the basic editing tools like you might have in something like Microsoft Word um, or another editing tool. So, um, <clears throat> anything I want to do here, if I want to make changes, I just simply come in and um, add those changes here. Um, for example, I might say, um, be sure, oh, not in blue, let's, do, let's change that to uh, normal, be, there we go, be sure to check out our, our district Facebook page, all right, and I would normally um, go out and put a link in there, but for the sake of, of time here, I'm actually not going to do that, okay. So once I've made the changes, those are not going to become live until I publish them. So I'm going to scroll down. And you can do this at the top. You'll see those buttons here, Save, Publish, and Cancel. Or the same buttons here at the bottom, Save, Publish, and Cancel. Um, saving uh, a website will save your work, but will not make it live online. Publishing will actually save it and make it live online. So typically, I just use Publish. So I'm going to click Publish and give it a moment and that change should be live on the website let's see yep there it is right there be sure to check out our district Facebook page okay now then a couple of other things that you may wish to do you may wish to set up pages for different areas underneath the area that you have rights to so I might want to set up a specific page for let's say um, really inspirational videos that I found about technology in the classroom. So I want to put that on a separate page. So to do that, I'm going to come up again to page properties. This is where you can do most of your work. And I'm going to do add a new page down here at the bottom. <clears throat> and so you see that I have all these different kinds of pages that I can add. Um, for most of the things that you'll do, the typical page format that you'll probably use is a content space page. So I'll just click Content Space Page. So I'm creating a new page that's going to be like a child or a sub page of the page that I currently have. And I'll call it Great Instructional Technology Videos. All right. And uh, we'll just click Tab. We can leave that field alone. I'm the page owner. 
And uh, yep, that looks good. So I'll click Create Page. And we'll wait just a moment. And here it is. Okay. And again, it leaves me in the edit view. I have all of those tools here. And I might come in and say, these are uh, some great instructional videos that I have found online and give links to those. Or even if I'm feeling fancy, I might actually embed those in the site. All right. Okay. So I'm actually going to cancel because I'm not going to do this right now. Okay. Now, if I need to, um, let me show you a couple of other um, basic things that you can do here under page properties. So there's a couple things. Um, page permissions, just to let you know, is going to show you who has rights to my page. So uh, it looks like Angela, Jeffrey, and myself have rights to this page. All right. Um, we're, there's nothing that you need to do in the manage approval process because we don't really use that. Version history is really great too. If you go in and just completely wipe out a website, all the previous versions of it are here. And you can just go back and preview those and say, oh, you know what, before I messed up that entire page, um, I really just want to take it back to the old version. You can preview that. If it's the one you like, you can click Make Live and that'll roll it back. So that's a really great tool. Close that because I'm not going to do that. Um, manage sub pages. Uh, here I can change the uh, page status, whether it's uh, available online or not. So if you have something that's kind of periodic, like for example a parent event or something like that, that happens periodically, um, again and again every year, but you don't want to have to recreate that page every time, you can actually put that page up there and then turn it on and off depending on whether or not that event's going on or, or whatever. There's a lot of different ways you can use that. Page order is another thing. It's going to take all of your little sub pages that you have. So here's all the ones that I have and I can see those and I can update them and it's as easy as dragging them and dropping them. Um, I typically put mine in, well no actually I don't put them in alphabetical order at all. Um, but I would recommend not doing what I've done here and putting your pages in alphabetical order if it makes sense. Think about the user who's going to be looking at your site and what's going to make the most sense to them and go with that. All right, I'm going to cancel that. Okay, let's see. Um, archive subpages, probably not going to do much there. Um, metadata, you can leave that alone. There's not a lot there. Here you can actually just click to any pages that you've created. Um, external link subpages, these are any pages that go out somewhere off of your site to a different website, for example. And then let me also show you that too. So let's say you want to create a link as a subpage to some great resource online. Um, the way you do that, instead of adding a content space page, is you add a, an external link page. So I'll show you how that works real quick. Okay, so here let's say, um, <clears throat> let's do a link to uh, Yahoo. Like that's some great resource. I'll just call it Yahoo is awesome. All right, and uh, we'll click that little down arrow and let it do its thing there. So here you need to put the web address in. Now notice that uh, it already puts the HTTP part in there for you, so you really don't have to type in like yahoo.com or www.yahoo.com. Um, it's going to ask you what page type this is. So if it's an external URL or a page that exists, some website outside of our system, you just leave that what it is. Um, and then you have the option of opening it in a in the window that the user is currently in or forcing their web browser, Internet Explorer, Firefox, Google Chrome, whatever, to open up a brand new window. So that's up to you whether you want to do that. I typically tell it to open in a new window because I like to keep people trapped in my content because I'm mean like that. And then I just create page. And give it just a moment. And... If I look over here, Yahoo is awesome. And if I click that, it should. Yep, and it's going to take me to Yahoo. All right, so Yahoo is not an incredibly useful instructional resource. So I'm actually going to go in and manage my subpages, my page status. And let's go find that Yahoo is awesome. And I'm actually, I'm just going to hide this section right here. There we go. There we go. And then I'm going to close this. It's going to reload this page, and then that Yahoo is Awesome link is going to disappear. Okay? So um, those are the basics of getting in and editing your site. Um, there are you know, lots of different things that you can do with this tool, but that should cover the basics. And if you have any more um, 
specific kinds of things that you would like to see or know, then just let me know. I'm always available here to help. Thank you very much. Have a great day.